Our one-hour free podcast recaps our show, and it's available wherever fine podcasts are found. And we have the full three-hour podcast available over at TomHartman.com if you want to really support our program. Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. And uh, I believe that uh, Mark Taylor Canfield is supposed to be with us right now. Is that right, Sean? Oh, he's on the line. There he is. Hey. Whoop. Uh, Joyce just grabbed him. Okay. As soon as she lets go, I will put him on the air. Um, uh, we're going to get a report from, uh, there he is, uh, Mark Taylor Canfield in Seattle, uh, independent reporter. Uh, Mark, you've been showing up at the Seattle protest for a while. Tell us what's going on. Well, over the weekend, things got a little crazy. The police were back at using chemical agents and flashbang grenades and 40 millimeter rubber bullets. I picked up some of those shell casings. I think one of them may have hit me, and those are big, Tom, so you don't want to get those in the face. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there was a, a fire at the construction site for the new juvenile detention center, which is one of the uh, demands of the protesters here in Seattle is that they don't want that new justice center built. And it looks like King County Executive Dow Constantine is kind of echoing that, that same sentiment. So but the trailers for the construction site were set on fire um, at uh, 12th and, and Spruce. So that started a whole day's worth of crazy protests. Now, the march the, uh, earlier that day was sponsored by a group called the Youth Liberation Front. And I don't know much about them, but they claim to have chapters across the country. But there was some vandalism. There was a, a fire and some broken windows at Starbucks. Um, and then later, and also broken windows at, at some businesses. And then later, yeah, the police at the same area where the chop zone was opened up on protesters again with all these chemical weapons. Now, uh, the Department of Justice had just filed for uh, for a temporary restraining order. And that was Judge Robarts. And he granted that just before the ban on these weapons was supposed to go into effect because the Seattle City Council had voted unanimously to ban tear gas, to ban rubber bullets and uh, flash grenades and all of these devices. But the Justice Department intervened. So as of Saturday, they were able to use it. Now, they're claiming that they're staying with an, an original preliminary injunction from a completely other case from a Black Lives Matter Seattle lawsuit against them which is also trying to restrict the use of these uh, this, these kinds of weapons, this military-grade CS gas especially. They claim they're not using the CS gas, but, Tom, I can tell you whatever they were using was really nasty. It burned my eyes and nose and hurt my throat and lungs for days. I couldn't see out of one eye because of the pepper spray. So they're using it again, whatever auspices they, you know, or justification they want to use. According to the Black Lives Matters protest and that court order, they're supposed to restrict the use of those weapons um, to tar specifically targeted groups of people or small groups of people not used indiscriminately. But once again, they were pretty much just tossing it into the crowd like they do in Portland every night. And so we're back to you know, flashbang grenades as being the normal course of things in Seattle for protests. However, I can tell you that on Saturday there was another group of protests that ended up peacefully. But on Saturday there were over 40 arrests, and some of them quite violent, um, which is really disturbing to me. I'm seeing that in Portland, too, and across the country where police tackle unarmed protesters and are very, very brutal with them. So that's the situation as of today here in Seattle, Tom. Mark, uh, to what extent is there a debate going on among the people who are showing up to protest, particularly those who may be associated with uh, organizations, you know, where there's, there, there's some organization or system? about the wisdom of using violence and vandalism as opposed to uh, using nonviolent protests the way that the, you know, so many civil rights people did back in the day and, and do to this day. Um, and, and, and to what extent might that nonviolent rhetoric have been co-opted by uh, provocateurs, by, by you know, right-wingers who are uh, infiltrating and trying to provide the police with an excuse to come out and inflict violence on people? I really don't know how to answer that question because I don't have any any evidence of that. I don't know what's going on. Um, a lot of times there's not much information about these marches and protests before they start. Sometimes groups, I think it was last weekend, uh, 
there was a, another group that joined the anti-ice march a couple hours into it that then began breaking windows and causing damage. So I don't know who these people are. Nobody seems to know. The police weren't around when the property damage was happening. They only showed up later to attack mostly pro- peaceful protesters at the original police line there at 11th and 12th right. and Pine, the same area where the chop has been. And by the way, there's still vegetable gardens there, Tom, and there are still some of the artwork has been preserved. So there is a sort of legacy still there at CHOP, and it's still being used as a center for protest. A lot of marches start there and gather there, and there have been daily marches in Seattle uh, every morning and every evening since CHOP actually was supposedly dismantled. So now we're back to the same police lines again, and it seems like, you know, the old, it seems like uh, we're reminiscing of the three-week period when CHOP existed because we're at that same location near the east uh, precinct of the Seattle Police Department. Well, now that we've seen that, uh, you know, according to the Minneapolis Police uh, Umbrella Man, there was, there was no violence and no property destruction whatsoever in the, in the uh, George Floyd uh, murder protests in Minneapolis until this white guy goes out and starts smashing windows at this auto shop. And the police now are saying that he's a, a biker with the Hell's Angels, and he did it specifically to try to create racial strife. Um, I would bet almost anything that that's going on in Portland and, and Seattle. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious if the wall of moms, wall of dads, and wall of vets that we're seeing here in Portland is being replicated in Seattle? Uh, perhaps, but not that, that I know of. I, I'm not sure. There, the one thing I do know is that the West Precinct, which is actually closer to downtown is now completely surrounded by a huge concrete wall so i guess i'm I'm, i can only assume there that the seattle police department is is seeing what's happening at the justice center in portland and saying well we need something more permanent than a metal fence because you get enough people to push against it and you can actually bring it down and you can see my views on all this actually at youtube i'm put up another longer documentary about what happened on saturday today okay mark taylor canfield you can check out his youtube feed thank you mark good talking with you Uh, We'll be back with more of the news of the day and your calls right after this. Stick around. It's the Tom Hartman Program, exposing the con in conservatives. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 202-808-9925. It's the place where despair is not an option. Back with your calls in just a moment. 